Hi there. Good evening. Good evening, good citizens out there in the world. Hopefully some people will um, hop on and join this live stream tonight. I am doing session one, chapter one of Optimized You, which is all about taking the seat of control in our lives. So tonight, I hope that I am not too all over the place with this. I am... Um, there's a lot to discuss and there's no perfect formula. And I think every once in a while I'll get feedback that people just kind of want a framework for like time management or something like that. And our lives are too dynamic and our situation is going to work for everyone. So I'll just say that take any parts of tonight and begin to apply like step one, step two, step three. There are some fundamental things that I think will help. And, um, you know, you can either use what we're going to talk about to just make next week go a little bit more smoothly. But if you also want to try to add something in, whether there's a specific focus that you're going to be working on based on what we did in the um, 0A and 0B sessions, um, we can consider that too. So I, I always start, chapter one is all about taking seat of control and blocking time to plan. And really, this just means taking about 20 minutes and, and literally blocking it like tomorrow. I often will do it on a Thursday to look at the following week. So, you know, Thursday to look at whatever's happening beginning Monday or whenever your week starts. And for me, it's not the same. It's not the same every week. You know, things change too much. Even like this week, not being able to record on Thursday night like I'd like to. You know, we all have things going on that keep us from doing things on the same night of the week. And don't let that get into your head like you've done something wrong. I know that's the story I tend to tell myself. And that's another theme in all of this. Be aware of the stories that you're telling yourself as you're trying to apply things. I mean, we, we get into our heads with a lot of, you know, negative talk. And, um, and really, I think life is here to be lived and lived out fully and the more you can kind of play and engage in every moment of the journey, the better and the less that we're kind of criticizing ourselves or have any negative self-talk, the better. So this is absolutely not about negative self-talk. So we're going to talk about the end of week preview. So basically looking out next week. Um, starting today or tomorrow, and then doing a daily preview and a daily review. So we'll talk about what that means. Um, even, like I said, just doing this alone will be a benefit to you, but if you wanna try to start incorporating something new um, into your re schedule or routine, you can do that too. So um, all of this is about you know defining loose parameters and being prepared and knowing that 50%, 40% percent percentage of what's going to happen next week, you will not have been able to plan for, and that's okay. So hopefully having a little bit of space between some things for buffer can be put in there as well. So um, looking at, at the preview, I'm going to use myself and, and just to give you a sense of what I do. I um, I use this planner pad, which I've recommended to all sorts of people, and, and people tend to like it, and I know that because the next year they ask me, can you, you know, point me to that source again, and, and so this is called the planner pad. If you were to Google it, you would find it, and I use the 8.5 by 11 size. They have different sizes, and they, I use the pre-populated pre pages with the, um, the calendar days already in there. Um, you know, any calendar system is fine. I do use electronic calendars for like the hard appointments and the reminders and all of that. But when I'm doing the preview, I'm transferring the hard appointments into this. Now, another little note about this, I uploaded today um, blank pages, like just one week if you wanted to download PDF from the Living Blueprints site so that you could just, you know, practice using this if you want to. But um, calendar so do what you want, but I think that this kind of allows you a lot of play because at the top um, Anyway, so I transfer the hard appointments and then um, and then I look at you know what the big projects are for the week whether it's personal professional and I try to chunk those in where there's space so I Seem to have gone away. So if I lost you, hopefully you'll come back very soon. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I was talking about using this planner pad and um, and using it to block out a time. And I'm going to wait just another second to see if anyone comes back and finds me here. Okay, I'll just continue and you can watch it in replay. All right, so I put in my heart appointments and then I see what 
needs to happen around that. So I'm traveling a lot next week and some of this has already been um, planned for next week. But again, heart appointments go into the calendar and then I see what is surrounding it in terms of timing and what has to be done. I have a couple of examples in the other book that I wrote about um, whenever I have, whenever I do this, I see where my time is kind of jammed up and where I'm going to have to do some extra planning. So that's one of the best benefits of kind of looking at the week ahead is really being able to see where you have to plan a little bit more and um, where critical things are going to have to happen. So again, I said next week I'm going to be traveling. So a lot of this kind of already happened because I, I had to plan out in advance. This is a trip I do about three times a year. A lot of materials have already been sent to various offices um, around the country. And um, but I'm also looking to see what are the holes in space where I can, you know, have a little bit of downtime in this heavy tra travel schedule and where I can fit in any exercise or you know how long it's going to take me to get ready to go to from point A to point B throughout the course of the week. So the preview again, I'm I'm locking in the hard appointments, and then I'm looking for chunks of time that I can dedicate to projects or other type of work, especially according to what we did with the brain dump exercise. And what's really important too is that once you've done this, that every day you're kind of looking at this at the beginning of the day and that you're editing and you're adjusting as you go through. So be sure to, um, to do yourself a favor by doing that preview. Um, I like doing the review too though. So at the end of the day, I might say, okay, where did I, what did I overbook? Where did I um, totally you know, miscalculate how long something was going to take? This can help you to do better planning in the future. Now, if you're trying to incorporate some new change, um, I described in some of the earlier videos how what I really wanted to change was I didn't want to be so tired at the end of the day, and um, I, you know, was, it was kind of tired and, and irritable as a result of lack of sleep and maybe not giving myself the right nutrient nutrients. So my first goal was to get better at sleep, and I know that this is um, a big one for a lot of people. They don't get enough sleep. And some people either compromise, even compromise sleep for exercise, which I don't I don't rec recommend. I really feel like if you are not getting enough sleep and you're exercising hard, you're probably doing more damage overall to your body. Um, and I am no fitness or exercise expert, um, but you know I've experimented a lot with myself. And um, if any of you are interested, Emily Schramm is someone online who talks about um, our 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 metabolism and our hormones and what happens at a cellular level when we're kind of overdoing it with exercise, lack of sleep, all of these things. So um, trying to get these in when we're working a full schedule is difficult enough. I really say sleep over exercise, although it's not like I don't exercise, but um, I, I certainly don't have 90 minutes in a day to, to do the whole gym thing and all of that. Um, that's kind of a side point, but if health is something that you're trying to incorporate in, I really feel like starting with something like essential, like sleep is, is a good thing to do. And it's, it's harder than you can think. I mean, when I have groups talk about, think about all of the things you have to have ready or things, things that have to be in place in order for you to get to bed at a certain time, you, you begin to think of, you know, ways that you're going to have to adjust your evening. And, uh, for a while, you know, I had to kind of set a timer in the evening to say it's time to start winding down and I think um, I see a babysat a lot of kids where they kind of had natural winding down time you know you give them a bath they they have this kind of routine I don't know if it's being a kid of the 70s we had zero routine I and, and so I don't know if anyone else suffers with it the way that I do but I think it's part of it is having that you know we as adults should have some kind of wind down routine and you know I like to have a cocktail or um, a drink now now but I do know especially in the days when I'm getting up at 5 30 that I'm beginning to feel more and more even if it's one drink so for me winding down might be something different I've been taking more baths and I highly recommend that you don't have to be in there for very long but for me it's a type of adjustment that's um, more nourishing and gives me something that sitting in front of the TV does not give me drinking a glass of wine does not give me I mean I might get an instant kind of relief from those things but um, Overall, if I want to perform better and have a more successful uh, experience of things, something more like a bath is, is good for me. Again, all, all things in moderation, believe me, there's still plenty of, you know, good drinks in my life, but um, just some ideas there. So again, if you're going to begin to 
incorporate something health related, really break it down and, and think about what has to happen in order for like that one adjustment to take place. Um, if it's food related, you know, it means probably special meal planning and that takes a little bit of time. I mean, we, we, it takes a little bit more effort to be more health conscious. Um, unless we can have a chef come in and prepare everything for us and put it in our freezer is, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, maybe, maybe some of you can do that. Um, so I hope this gives a little bit of a sense. Again, I do this preview about every Thursday or Friday to look at the week ahead to see where things are jammed up or where I might need to take something off the schedule and kind of alleviate a little bit. Um, and then every morning, usually before the day really starts and before people can, you know, interrupt, I will try to think of, you know, what's essential. And I look at that day, has anything changed that I need to address in that particular day? Um, so planning is just, it's so awesome. And I mean, there are so many benefits to this. I mean, you just feel more aligned. You feel more aligned with what matters to you in the big picture. And that is just it just gives you ease. You know, a lot of people suffer from decision fatigue. I mean, I experienced this most um, when I was moving, you know, I was in the middle of like, just we, every single day we had to decide, you know, we're keeping this, we're getting rid of this. It's constant, constant decision fatigue. And I feel like a move we, that's really accelerated. And But we do this to ourselves all the time when we don't even plan out the week. So I found that, you know, having things laid out um, is really important. And tonight I have to pack, right? I'm leaving tomorrow and and um, what I would traditionally do when I'm kind of being lazy Linda is I'll just start putting things together and then my brain will think, oh, I need that. And oh, I think that it is, it's draining and exhausting to approach packing that way. I am much better if I write everything down first and then just keep referring to the list. If I forgot something, it goes on the list. I'm just trying to save myself energy because I have had a long day and I do want to be in bed by a certain time. And I'm just I'm trying to make it easy on myself by putting in a little pre-work. And that's what this is all about. Um, what else? The benefits, the alignment, feeling centered, the, the lack of decision fatigue, um, all of these things. And again, I, I mentioned it before, note self-judgment and any negative stories that you tell yourself about the process. If you can apply any of the things that I'm talking about, that's awesome. Um, and if I get any of your examples specifically for what you're doing, then that can help me as we go through the next weeks to actually apply um, some of these tips to what you're really doing. So again, we're, we're looking at this book, Optimized You, which just came out, and we're in the first chapter, Planning and Blocking Time, and really just put 20 minutes on your calendar like tomorrow to do this for the next week. If there's anything that you need to kind of brainstorm or flesh out because you do have a big project coming up, you can take the time to do that too and just chunk down those individual items. And like next week, I think we're going to be talking about um, next actions, and we'll get into some other things. Um, I just wanted to, you know, at the end of this chapter, I wrote to plan is to adjust your mindset. Previewing enables you to powerfully take ownership of your roles and responsibilities. Your energy will be higher because you won't be unnecessarily drained by anxiety over the unknowns, which are going to happen. We need to acknowledge that you will be better positioned for success in business and in life. And again, this is all success as you define it. You get to decide what's cool for you. And at the end of the week, you know, or as this week goes on, just notice things, you know, and, um, you know, was anything easier? I will say sometimes things are not easier in the beginning. And I think making a health, big health change cannot, can be uneasy in the beginning and making like a big financial change too. As far as the health goes, people who are detoxing, I, I did a detox last, um, the end of the summer last year. And for many people, it takes at least three days to kind of get rid of the headache and the, um, just that feeling of little. For me, it was like five and a half days of headaches and just feeling more crappy than I did before. Now, once I was through it, it was awesome, but it certainly didn't feel good when I was still doing it. So that could happen to you when you're trying to do anything new. Um, it also happens with exercise, right? We're really sore if we're trying to do a new type of exercise in the beginning. So that doesn't always feel good either. It's almost like we can't, we shouldn't really judge how it's going for a couple of weeks in some cases. I use the financial one too, because um, when my husband and I combined our finances and um, had budget meetings in the beginning, it was terrible. I mean, it was awful to fight about these things that we didn't have to consider when we were single, right? It's like now we've got to like agree on this stuff. Um, and that was the way we chose to do it. I know that not all couples do it like that. But um, sometimes things are not easy in the beginning when you're trying to make a significant life uh, change or adjustment. So let's see. Was there anything else I wanted to mention here? 
Um, so over the course of the next week, I will probably do short little live streams um, here and there um, from various cities, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. It'll be very exciting. And, um, and I'm not quite sure yet because I haven't done my preview yet to see when I'm going to do a chapter two. I, I, I don't, it hasn't become clear to me because uh, several of the nights next week, I, I think I'll be traveling from one office to the other. So um, that wraps it up for tonight. Again, I, I appreciate having you here and um, please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything weird that isn't quite like making sense for you because I do tend to be all over the place. That's why I need all these structures and systems. Um, please, please reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation or a quick exchange, um, you know, private message me, how, whatever you think. All right. Have a great week. And um, again, if you want the planner pad, those pages are uploaded. I have blank pages, PDF attached to the Living Blueprints um, site. So you can try it out. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.